God. You had to leave us here, didn't you? Out of all places. Well done. Uh, so we're gonna walk. We're gonna walk to the site. So this is another normal day in the bush. going in the bush so you have to be really prepared so you need wipes because you know we might not have toilet paper. Nice classic biscuit. Right so we've got our stuff ready for our trip. We're going to take you through the journey of how it is going into the field because it's not all about the air-conditioned office it's about actually the real work. All right see you in a bit. So we just made this gulu, drove 200 and something kilometers. Uh, quite proud of myself. Uh, gulu's nice, it's clean. Welcome to Nexus Green's YouTube channel and we are in Gulu. And today I'm gonna to take you to four sites to show you the Ministry of Water project that we're doing, blanketing the country with solar irrigation. So let's get in the car and we start making this move to the first site, which is about 120 kilometers away. It's gonna get bumpy guys, so let's do this. God, you had to leave us here, didn't you? <laughs> Out of all places. We're at Makono Euro with uh, Keith, one of our CLOs here. And uh, as you can see, we got stuck in the bush. Well, well done, well done. Uh, so we're gonna walk, we're gonna walk to the site. So this is another normal day in the bush. people are going to be benefiting from this site so in terms of uh, benefits you're looking at food security yeah you're looking at uh, uh, income generation yeah they're, they're gonna do like value crops now, yes right? they're doing high value crops high as value you can crops. see they're already growing some vegetables yeah if you take a look around really yeah. That, yeah this is really good on the market if mm -hmm. sold to across the border just across the border is Sudan it's not so far Sudan. over there, just there. yeah how far uh, probably about 40 kilometers. We're only 40 kilometers from Sudan? Yeah. That's it. Here we are at our first site for today. As you can see, we're at a solar irrigation site. So I'm going to take you inside. You're going to be able to see some of the materials, some of the, our Nexus Green staff at work. And then we're going to interview uh, the PE, which is the project engineer on site. So let's go and do this. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good, good, good. Okay. This started just about a month ago. We are doing uh, irrigation, construction of the contra build, uh, contra house. Yeah. That uh, involved the pump house and then the guard room. Yeah. We are doing on the fence, solar array. Uh, we've already finished the foundations. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do. Um, Pipe laying mm -hmm. for for irrigation. Okay, and actually we haven't got uh, much challenge apart from rain that um, is uh, being materials. Generally, construction has been good apart from the delivery of material. Okay, the, so I think I've mentioned that in this video, yeah. delivery of material is something I'm going to take back. Yeah. You know, with all these kind of like multiple site projects, yeah. you know, it takes a lot of logistics planning. Being on the site and having engagements with the subcontractor, our project engineers on site, um, it's clear that we have a lot to work to do uh, internally as well. And that's typical of when you're doing business, you know, um, communication, I always say to my staff is really key. How long will you take for this one to be completed? Uh, we need like uh, 
three weeks or two. In about three weeks, this place will be completely uh, generating using solar panels um, and you'll see water being pumping. So I'm really excited about that. Right now, we're going to go speak to the farmers who are going to benefit from this site and basically get their engagement. Uh, one, Hope Nexus Green is doing a good job on, on the ground. This is their land. We're just here to build and then just understand what they're going to grow because it's really important to understand you know, why we're doing this project. It's for them to build high value crops, sustainable farming, and, you know, have a, a real good positive impact on the GDP of Uganda. I'm a farmer. And what do you farm? Yeah. What kind of things do you farm? Like, what do you grow? Growing these uh, tomatoes uh -huh. and uh, cabbages. Yeah. And even uh, we can grow sometimes maize. Generally green. Mm -hmm. We are now very happy. Because from generator, we are moving to solar system, yeah. which will be more useful for us. Yeah. can help us a lot because we shall be using water and endless. When you're engaging with the community, do you find different communities are different from different areas that you go to? Uh, yes, uh, in terms of culture and uh, way of life, yes. Yeah. But the ultimate goal of benefiting mm. is one. Yeah. and empowerment of the community is one they all they're all encouraged they're all encouraged and they're all willing to uh, they're all willing to develop yeah. and uh, boost their income levels has this whole experience humbleized you as well like has it really seen shown you like you know i thought you're a bit of a compiler boy but now you know you're really in the thick of the bush has this really like like grounded you and go wow there's so much opportunity that needs to be tapped into in agriculture yeah, um, and I think it has been a wonderful experience. First of all, uh, getting the opportunity to work with Nexus Screen on such an amazing and big project. The effect, I started in Karamoja oh, wow. initially, and then I moved on to West Nile. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just sitting and being with the locals, it's, it's a very humbling experience. Yeah. And it's something that uh, I think everyone should go through and understand that it's not always uh, sausages and meat pies <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I like it, I like it. Yeah, Keith, you're a good one. They're really excited about solar irrigation and using solar energy to pump water and get more cycles so they, their productivity every year is going to be a lot more greater. Um, again, looking forward to seeing this in three weeks. So, you know, from me to you, I'll see you in a bit. Thanks. Okay, and what's the population here? The population is 16,000 wow. plus. So you're looking after 16,000 plus people? Yes. Okay, and uh, you know, what did you do before you had solar irrigation here? Or should I say a solar pumping supply system? Uh, we had uh, a system which was constructed uh -huh. 25 years ago. By that time, the population was less than 4,000. Okay. It was supposed to care for 4,000 plus people. Right. Yeah, so, you know, being a town council, it first became a town board uh -huh. for a period of almost uh, over a decade. Mm -hmm. So the population was growing. Yeah, sure. Mm, bit by bit and bit yeah. by bit. And the old water reservoir, the pump, yeah. the, the one constructed in 1998, Kanoketa. So from a water supply system from Nexus Green, do you see this being an added benefit now for the community? Yeah, it's indeed going to be a very great benefit to the community. It has come at the right time yeah. uh, because uh, currently the old pumping station had broken down. Oh dear. Yeah, because uh, it has never been renovated. Yeah. It cannot cope up. Right. So now this one of Nexus Green is our biggest hope. There we go. Yes. Perfect. Thank you, thank you. Look at that, using solar, huh? Fantastic.
you know, in construction, we always have challenges, right? So it's also important to make sure your subcontractors also are vetted properly. And the chairman has, you know, been very explicit, you know, they lost hope, but thank God Nexus Green's in-house team came and saved the day. So uh, we'll be taking that to uh, the top management and uh, really understanding how all the subcontractors are doing across the country because it's really important that we understand they are absolutely at the, at, how can I put it, at the levels of Nexus Green's quality and assurance and that's really important. So as you can see, going to site by site is, is a, a tough order, especially with the, the roads. Yeah, and so now we're going on the ferry to get to another site. Anyway, just want you to know uh, we are on to the third site of the day. So we'll see you in a bit. An amazing experience. <laughs> do this all day, every day. Next up, Greenway. This is beautiful, like what I'm seeing here. This is Uganda at its finest, it's gorgeous. We are in Ajujo in Moya district. What a drive, I'm telling you, this was crazy getting here. We went up the hills this steep, it was nuts. I'm glad I'm in uh, Morris's car. Apart from Morris is gonna be really upset with me after I give it back because uh, I think we, uh, we, we mashed it up. Anyway, we're here for a water supply site uh, for the community. I'll ask uh, Keith how many uh, people uh, benefit from this site. We're looking at an estimate of about uh, 1,200 people. Oh, nice. Okay. 1,200 people, about that. you got 1,200 people benefiting from this site. Yes. Okay. Exactly. And, and, uh, and are they, I don't see anyone. Like, where are these people? And, and that's, that's the challenge we're trying to address here. Okay. The people walk over three, four kilometers to go and fish water from a borehole. Wow. That's crazy. So what we're trying to do is motorize a borehole yeah. that's right behind us. Okay, okay. And stretch this water through pipes to yeah. the different communities and the different centers. You know, you can imagine you come here, you're having to pump it manually. All right, here we go. So as you can see, we've got community people here. Um, and it's really sad to see children here doing this. They should be at school. So now we have this system here. This is all going to be, you know, motorized. These kids won't have to come here. On average, I read from our studies, 10 kilometers on average a day, a day. to collect water. Yeah. So this system is going to be a game changer because they're going to have a tap in their, in their local community, right? Yeah, it's going to have a tap in the local communities and it saves a lot of time. You're mm. looking at kids having to come and fetch water for for school yeah so we're addressing such challenges and then mothers as well yeah and then the queues if you come here in the evening it's the just queues are crazy, crazy. Yeah. there's another prime example of why nexus green solar solutions for this project is so important for the community right yes and it creates productivity that they, they can now spend less time walking to get water when they can spend more time on their farms i'm assuming and yes. doing more productive stuff exactly. like creating an economy for the country the bush oh my gosh so we're in Nebi and uh, we're about to uh, see one of the sites that unfortunately was abandoned by one of our subcontractors because they did a poor job and we are going to take over as Nexus Green in-house um, so the ones that we took over the last two sites that you saw obviously we took those over in-house and you can see what a huge difference Nexus Green does in terms of professionalism, as well as, you know, consistent work. So I think I'm going to start really investing heavily in uh, the in-house construction company because 
clearly we have competent people. We're now back at base. Whew, what a long three days it's been. Um, we've seen so many different, 16 districts, uh, seven different sites. We actually approached three countries, Congo, South Sudan, and obviously being in Uganda. Um, lots of, lots of work to be done. Um, I think we're gonna have to go back into the field a lot more, guys. So thank you so much for joining me on this amazing journey what an experience i hope you enjoy it make sure you share like and subscribe i really want everyone to see what i'm doing especially here in uganda and what a beautiful project we've got here especially the fact that it touches so many people like you know this water irrigation is not just about you know irrigation that we see from the optics it's about the aftermath it's about what they do with the water and how they you know, change their lives by doing more productivity in terms of irrigation and food crops and then just having like, you know, taps in different uh, villages. I mean, we saw like kids with canisters and they're like walking 10 kilometers on average a day and, you know, we've got to stop that so they can go to school and get a good education. So the Nexus Green project, you know, is here to stay. We've got many more sites to do. So thank you so much and I'm out.